sure this looks familiar as we had this pandemic this 2020 year and of course this is just one of many things we've dealt with this year so we all have our own ways different cultures different ways that we've been brought up to dealing with hard times like this meditation some kind of relaxation I have been fortunate that I've grown up in the church and I think a lot of people who've grown up in the church don't realize or don't appreciate how fortunate they are that they've grown up already with this foundation. This has been a hard year for everyone and I am certainly no exception by any means as Christians. We turn to our Bible several books to the Bible you can turn to, and I'm sure a lot of Christians have during this time. Um, the Book of Job is a popular one to turn to when you're going through suffering. Uh, a lot of Christians would probably turn to the Book of Revelation, uh, preaching that, you know, apocalyptic, it's the end of the world, and I'm weary about that. I feel like there's some parts of history that were probably more end of the world scenario. Yeah, we've had the plague, we've had the killer hornets, we've had the wars, and la da 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 da. But it's not the first time in history we've had that. I mean, it's certainly been biblical proportions, a lot of exodus, you know, going on. But it's reaching a cycle. Um, I've turned to the book of Job before. I feel like. That's a book that people turn to when they're new to suffering. Um, I've turned to the book of James. James talks a lot about trials and tribulation, um, suffering and how to get through them. James 1, 2 through 3. So right off the bat, he talks about perseverance. One of my favorite words. Consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. I feel like it's easy to have faith when you've never had that faith, you know, test it. I mean, when your life is good all the time, it's so easy to say, my life is good because God is in my life. What do you do when you no longer have that? Another one is James 5.10. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience and in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. One of my biggest pet peeves right now in Western Christianity is somehow it has turned into this notion of if we have faith, if we if we believe in God and we hold on to the faith of God, our lives will be wonderful. We will not suffer. And we wonder why people lose their faith when they go through hard times. And the Bible was full of suffering. My favorite thing was I heard my pastor, and this is after I started going through my hard times. I'm like, so brilliant. Jesus was baptized. And it kind of went downhill from there. It did. <laughs> he started, you know, preaching the word of God and he was persecuted and then he was, you know, sacrificed and, you know, and that's kind of how it, kind of the trend for all of his prophets. Even in the Old Testament, we see martyrs of God and we see martyrs of Christianity. So how can we sit there and say, if we have faith, nothing bad will happen until you've had the deep devil's hand on your shoulder whispering in your ear over and over again where is your god now you do not know what it's like to have your faith tested and that's where my story begins this year of my 2020 and why you will see that james's word of perseverance have given me so much strength so i'm going to start my story in 2019 and the reason I start in 2019, because I want to add to why it was that much more devastating to us, my husband and I. 
So I had my hysterectomy, June 3rd, 2019. And it was hard. Um, obviously at 34 to mark the fact that I would never have children, we had our dogs and we had accepted that we were gonna be dog parents with no intention on adopting. It was just something some people do and they're wonderful people and it's something that was not in my plan. My healing was I was gonna train for the Disney half, Princess Half Marathon and I did and I trained hard and it really helped me heal. I had said at the beginning when I started training, gosh, if I could get that nine and a half miles under 90 minutes, I'm gonna smoke it. January 1st, I did it. I did it and I cried and I prayed and I said, thank you, God, for giving me a sign that this year is going to be great because I felt that was my sign. So I was getting towards the end of my training and for my run, same time I do, you know, days that I run outside, same route that I would start out with. I mean, this is not, I've got my music on and all of a sudden I feel sharp pain in my leg, right leg, and it's kind of like how people describe a shark attack. I mean, it's just silent, like no anything to fall to the ground. And I realized it's a dog. A dog had come up behind me and grabbed my leg, and I froze and stiffened my legs, and I just knew in my head that if I fought back, my leg, it would have been a lot worse. So we just froze, and I waited, and then the dog let go. So then I froze to see where this dog was going, and came around, and the dog actually came and licked me in the face. So obviously I knew it was safe to get up. I was wearing pants, like yoga pants, that were tying around the ankle, so I wasn't sure the damage yet. I actually walked home, went in there, and I pulled down my pants. And I saw the significance of the damage and called my husband and I said, are you on your way home? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, when you get home, we need to go to the emergency room. I was attacked by a dog and it looks like it did a lot of damage. And so, the dog had ruptured my Achilles tendon and ripped the muscle right off the shin bone. I'd walked home purely out of shock. There was no reason I should have been able to walk home. He was to say I didn't get to run that race two weeks before all that training, just out the drain. And I got my ortho Monday and he said I could take my boot off because we couldn't cast it because it was a dog bite. So I took my boot off to take a bath so I could clean it and where the dog's jaw had bit made a cross. And I, I took a picture of it and this is February 11th. And I took a picture of it and the dog bite happened February 6th and I said wow and look I was like I found a cross in my leg I was like see it's gonna get better this is a sign of hope everything's gonna be better this is God telling me that things are gonna get better a friend of mine took me home I couldn't drive because it was on my right leg she dropped me off I gave her a thumbs up I went into the garage went to open my door and there's just this blast of heat and smoke and I could see you know orange in the distance and my first instinct was to um, run in and you know, get the dogs oh my god I I need to get my dogs. <laughs> and little Cleopatra, she usually meets me at the door. I couldn't see her through the smoke and I was trying. And I almost went in, I even turned on the light. And it was the voice of God. Told me, no, don't, don't go in. 
I turn it around and call 911. By the time I got to the end of the driveway, the smoke was coming out of the roof. Fire department was across the street, so they got there quickly. I knew the dogs were dead. We lost everything. I guess it was a month before spring break. And after spring break, the world shut down. I started working at home, which actually started to be a very fortunate thing because April 17th, I got diagnosed with mono, which is basically all the same symptoms as COVID. Just lasts longer. I am still dealing with the symptoms. I've lost 20 pounds. I am working on getting that weight back. I'm also still currently in physical therapy for my leg. I am walking. I am running at 80% of my body weight. And so things are getting better. I am in a new house. We did get five pieces of furniture back from the fire, so there's still a little bit of home. I'm contemplating, what is God's purpose for this? And I think that's kind of where we all are right now, whether the struggles we've had this year had to do with COVID or, you know, the riots or, you know, or whether we've had our own personal struggles. I think our problems have been, what is God's purpose for this? And I've often said that if it helps you to try to justify God's purpose, and by all means, do it, but know that as a Christian, it's not your obligation to do so. Because the truth is, no matter what we come up with, whatever justification we come up with, we're probably not right. We won't know until the end. It's to use those efforts that you were putting into trying to figure out why and put it towards healing or put it towards moving forward, putting an action into place. Be patient, as James has told us.